If I could have your attention here in the media center, we are now joined by Dale Earnhardt Jr., driver of the number 88 nationwide Chevrolet for Hendrick Motorsports. And Dale, before we get talking about Talladega here, you did something really cool this week with Nationwide unveiling a, a, a special program for the Nationwide Children's Hospital in Columbus where you sold opportunities for people to put their name on your car for Kentucky. And you raised a lot of money in about 48 hours' time. Yeah, they um, Nationwide put together a real cool program for the car we're going to race in Kentucky where they sold the, sold the hood off to the race fans uh, to put their name on it and uh, sold it out in 24 hours so they found room for more names sold that out in another 24 hours and raised eighty one thousand uh, dollars really quick so uh, we need to take a page out of the book uh, f from what they did and uh, utilize some of that marketing and, and awareness in, uh, in our own foundation because that was really fast and, and uh, raised a lot of money in just such a short period of time all that goes directly to the Nationwide Children's Hospital in, Ho uh, in Ohio so very happy to be able to support that that's very that's something that we're definitely connected to and have been for some time so um really cool so looking uh, anytime you get an opportunity to do that uh, it seems effortless to do and it makes a big impact for the uh, hospital uh, the fans will get to uh, have their name on the car for the race and on the die cast obviously it's uh, uh tyler was telling me for the die cast they'll put a, like 300 names on on one series of diecasts, another 300 names on another series, so the fans can actually see their name when they get the diecasts on there. So that'll be fun for them, I believe. Outstanding. <clears throat> We're going to open the floor to questions. We'll start here with Jordan here in the middle and go to Bob. Jordan Bianchi, SB Nation. Dale, obviously you, you have a great connection with your fans across the board at every track. I, is it different here, and if so, how? Um, yeah. There's a lot of them here. Um, you know, it seems like we have a ton of fans in this area. I, um, you know, the first time I really went deer hunting was uh, with my father in Alabama. <sighs> Used to have a lot of friends down here. Uh, everybody's kind of grown up and moved out, but used to come down here when I was working with Budweiser and Remington and, and do some hunting. Um, and, you know, always love coming here as a kid uh, to see the races. This was such a fun racetrack to be at. And a uh, little go-kart track um, not far from here where we stayed at the hotel. And we used to uh, burn through a $100 bill there every, every night with my buddies, um, Mike Wickham, Bob's son, and uh, Doug Williams' son, Scotty, and Brad Means, Jimmy's son. Um, so been coming here a long time and, uh, dad won a lot of races here. We won some races, uh, won four in a row, pretty much was, uh, unbeatable there for a while. Just about had five in a row over there in turn three and four. They gave it to Gordon. Um, and then we won the, we won the next time back, which would have been six in a row. So pretty good little streak there. And uh, I think the fans really appreciated uh, what we were doing on the track. We we're, uh, you know, we always want to. Uh, they come, they come out here to have fun. You know, they come out here. I think watching a race at Talladega is so different than anywhere else. Because at Talladega, when you come to watch a race, just imagine all you guys in here that you have a favorite driver, right? Um, if you go to a race at Talladega, your driver can literally possibly take the lead at any moment in the race. You can't say that anywhere else. So um, with with that comes a responsibility, I think, as a driver to try to make that happen. Because when you come off turn four, you can see a big difference in arms in the air and and people excited about what just happened when you take the lead. And that really, you can't create that anywhere else. So uh, And they, they want you to keep doing that all day long because they just want to celebrate all day. They want to have fun, and when you get up there and mix it up, and it gets them, it gets them, it gives them what they want. Um, so, I think that's why I like running here, and uh, definitely makes it a unique experience as opposed to any other track we go to. We're gonna come up front to Bob, and then go to Jeff and the Brant. Uh, Bob Pockers, ESPN. Um, 
you tweet earlier this week that manipulating the suspension is kind of the forbidden fruit, but uh, it seems like everybody is trying to still <laughs> work in that area. Is How much work is going on, do you feel like, in that area, and is it just kind of matter of fact or just matter of time that, you, that you'll see what we saw this week and people getting penalized for it? Well, if you know where there's speed, um, you're, you got to be crazy not to try to work in that area. Uh, we saw, uh, you know, a long time ago the benefits from skewing and yawing the cars and skewing the housings, and um, it's hard. It's hard to, you know, un. It's hard to uh, remove the engineering and unlearn what we've we've understood and and found to be competitive. <clears throat> so, I mean, they c if they tried to, for example, make rules to unseal the cars. Everybody would spend all the money they had to figure out how to seal the car back. So we can't. We know that's best, and we're going to try to work in work in that direction. Um, you can, uh, you know, you can grumble about uh, the Penske deal, but you know, at the same time, um, it's uh, it's impressive. You know that they got that they figured out something because the rules have gotten harder to make something happen. With the changes that they made to the rear housings, it's made it almost impossible to figure out a way to get anything back there to move around. So when anybody does it, it's in this environment that we have today, it's quite, quite uh, impressive. So well, everybody's certainly watching everybody in the garage, uh, wondering uh, who's doing what and how they're doing it. Uh, when you see a bunch of guys landing underneath the back end of a car, you just assume they're trying to figure something out or doing something that nobody else knows about. So. Um, but it's a that's the thing about the garage is you can't really hide from each other and um, either NASCAR is going to figure it out and let everybody know what's going on, uh, or or somebody sees it uh, next you know somebody you see something going on in the garage stall next to you and it don't take long to trickle through the rest of the garage and everybody has it. Uh, the great thing about it is is you don't never you don't always want to be the first guy to figure it out because. Uh, you want to be the guy that kind of figures it out at the right time of the season. Because everybody takes the idea, whatever the Penske guys are doing, uh, the smart people in all these companies know, uh, they'll take that idea and they'll make it better. They'll put a little spin on it and make it their own. Uh, so you kind of want, you don't want to figure that out at the beginning of the season. It's kind of important to figure that out when all the money's on the line. Go next to Jeff, then to Brant, then to Matt. Jeff Gluck from jeffgluck.com, back behind the cameras. Uh, I was listening to your podcast this week, and you said that, or it came out that you, you don't carry a wallet, even a driver's <laughs> license with you. Sometimes and I forget. So first of all, what what the hell? Second of all, um, <laughs> like how do you function in daily life without like a credit? Like what happens if you want to go get something to eat or get gas or something? You don't have money. I have people. No, I have a gas tank at the house, so I don't. I don't buy gas from the store. We buy gas in bulk. It's a little cheaper, and um, it's a. This is something Kenny Wallace told me a long time ago when I was fixing up my property about about 2002, 2003. He's like, get your gas tank, and buy it in bulk. It's cheaper. And that way you ain't got to go anywhere to get gas. You just pull out the driveway, pump it right there, and get on down the road. So that's what I do with gas. Um, usually, if I ain't got my wallet and it's time to eat. Whoever's with me is going to buy the food, <laughs> and uh, I'm good for it, though, so it's, it's usually no, no big discussion. Um, but, uh, I mean, yes, I, probably 50% of the time I leave the house unintentionally with, without my wallet, and it's paying the butt because I go over to Junior Motorsports and I don't have my key to get in the door and have to get somebody to come down there and get me in, which is a little embarrassing for the boss or the guy that owns the building. But, uh, you know, it's it's... it's I don't really spend money. I don't. Uh, I don't really. Uh, I don't really go buy stuff. So I don't. Uh, you know, usually when I'm out and about, I'm. I'm going to do something as far as a responsibility with my team, going to the team meeting or something like that. And I'm not really uh, hardly in a store to physically purchase anything. So I don't. I don't. Uh, I guess that's why I keep forgetting it's because I don't hardly need it. It's all that time spent at the water cooler. Let's go to Brant. <laughs> Brand James, USA Today Sports. After the Texas race, you mentioned the speed that the Penske cars had and uh, the swerving and the, the hard downshifting they were doing. Was, was that a, an open letter to NASCAR to, to take a hard look at what they were doing or maybe a plea to your engineers to 
as you alluded to earlier, to, to figure it out better than they were doing? I think any time, it's just like when you, it wasn't a plea to NASCAR at all. Um, <clears throat> that's one thing that, I don't know, there's no really, uh, there's, there's an etiquette or kind of an unspoken code in the garage. You don't really, you know, if you go up in the holler and complain to NASCAR about something you see that's not really like, that's not well appreciated by anybody else in the garage. There's guys that do that, but um, it's not really appreciated. Uh, <clears throat> if, you know, you, you sort of, uh, you know, like I say, you try to figure out what's, what guys are doing to find speed and make, you know, create, create something better, build, build a better mousetrap. And um, <clears throat> when I was, uh, if I see something on the racetrack, I, ha I can't help that everybody has my radio. And you or anyone else can hear what I'm going to say, but I have to tell my team what I see. Uh, they need to, uh, and I, I don't trust myself to wait till I get into the garage without forgetting uh, what I saw and making sure that I, um, s you know, help them understand clearly exactly what's going on. So whether it's any, whatever you see, I mean, if you see some, if you see a car that looks like it has more skew than anyone else, or if you see a guy that's sealing his side skirts better, or so anything you see, you make a note of it and mention it to your team because uh, it's something that was worth discussing. Uh, how can we do that, or why are they? Why did why did I see what I saw? What what's the advantage to that? And and try let's try to understand it and um, figure out what we can do to uh, learn from it. Um, you know, I uh, you know I think I, I like I said. I mean, I I we're all out there trying to figure out how to you know, get our cars to run faster, every team. And, um, you know, I, I wasn't, uh, I was more impressed, I, th I think, than anything about, uh, you know, any time a team like, you know, any time a team, no matter who it is, figures something out, it's, it's impressive, the ingenuity and ing ing engineering going on in the garage and uh, trying to figure out a way around the rule book. It's, uh, it's you know, been going on ever since they, they made the first rule book. Um, and so any, it, as a driver and someone that uh, knows a little bit about the mechanics of the car, it's always impressive when you see what guys can come up with to try to find speed in these cars. Go next to Matt, then to Kelly, then to Jerry. Matt Weaver, AutoWeek.com. Uh, a couple of years ago, you said that when you get to the point in your NASCAR career where you decide to walk away from it, one thing that you had wanted to do was kind of step back and return to your roots because you weren't able to fully appreciate being a late model driver in the Carolinas and Virginias. Has the injury at all changed that, and is that still something you'd like to do? Yeah, I think it is. Um, I just had to see how much I got uh, as far as how, how much I want to do that. You know, I have the access to the cars that we have on our late model program. We're going to run some Xfinity races, um, and we'll see if, uh, get a, if the itch um, gets too bad. We'll have to go, uh, go to the track and have some fun. Um, uh, so yeah, I'm certainly still open to that. It certainly uh, <clears throat> just depends on the side of the bed you get, you know, wake up on, as to whether you want to go go over to Hickory and, and fool around and have some fun. I mean, those guys are serious. They're not out there goofing off as a hobby. So if you're gonna go do it, you better be ready um, to get after it. Because they, they, I've been over there and watched them. They run. They're they're trying to do the same thing I was when I was in running late models. Is trying to get get up to the next level. Okay, we're going to go to Kelly, then to Jerry, then to Ben, then to Chase. Kelly Crandall, Racer.com. Dale, you had said something on the radio uh, last weekend at Richmond to the effect of wanting to kind of scrap the, the setup and, and I guess try something else. Is there just a certain feel you haven't had in the cars this year that you're looking for? Uh, the setup for Richmond is nothing like any setup that we'd run anywhere else. So it's not necessarily uh, the cars don't feel the same every week. Um, We've had some great cars. We've had some not so awesome cars. I think as a company, we weren't very strong last week. Um, uh, we're, all four cars had different setups in them. Um, we were trying to run our cars completely different than the other three. And the funny thing about Richmond is, is that setup worked pretty good last year. And uh, for whatever reason, it didn't work good this year. And I, um, you know, we just, uh, it's the th Richmond's just one of them places where you can't keep taking the same thing back and expecting the same results. It's got to, you just got to be really open-minded to going in a completely different direction and 
And we were. I mean, that's why we showed up how, you know, so different from our teammates. But it just didn't work out. But it didn't – it wasn't even better or worse than any of those three cars. You know, as a group, we needed to have a little more speed, and we're, we're working on it. Go next to Jerry. Jerry Jordan, <coughs> Jerry Jordan, kicking the tires that net and performance fishing network. Last week after the race, you said you were giving up on points, basically. You were going to go for the wins. Uh, next week, we go to Kansas and then Charlotte, and then we, you know, we're getting these, some of these races that are in the, in the playoffs. Is it kind of twofold that you, you have to get the win, but you also have to maybe prepare in case you make it into the playoffs? How do you, how do you go about that? Mm, man, I, I'll just drive them. <laughs> man, I ain't worried about all that. Uh, I got so much going on. Um, you know, <laughs> you know, I trust in the team and Greg and everybody to, to know that, um, you know, when we get to – uh, certain racetracks, we got the best car we we need. Uh, we're, you know, we we got our we got a good setup under the car, and we're doing the best thing we can for ourselves to be competitive. Uh, whether we're in the chase, whether it's the second race of the year or the last race of the year, we 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 take the best car we can and give it our best effort. Um, uh, you know, we just need to we need to put together you know some races here. We gotta you know we gotta get a good handful of races under our belt that are finishes that we can be proud of and see where that nets us on the points deal but you know it'd be nice if we could just go ahead and get a win out of the way and uh get on with it but it's gonna be a fun year regardless of uh you know how things shake up on in the in the end uh and i do think we can win some races i really do come down to the front dale lauren sessler al.com Look, I know you talked a little bit earlier about Alabama being special to you, but I need complete honesty. You're somebody that enjoys being out in the infield, enjoys all the things that come with racing here. What makes Alabama so special in just this racetrack and the people? Honesty. I don't, I mean, I don't know what you're looking for. Um, <laughs> huh? Have I been lying? <laughs> Have I ever told a lie? Um, oh, well. I mean, obviously, uh, they party here pretty hard, uh, which is all, I mean, that always, I like racetracks where the fans get after it on the weekend, Friday and Saturday night. Um, they definitely get after it here. Um, the thing about, uh, you know, Talladega is there's always a race for the lead all the time. Um, like I was saying earlier, this place does, delivers a bit of a different experience than most racetracks because the lead is always up for grabs. There's always a battle throughout the pack, and um, you can see some guys do some really, really cool stuff in the draft, some really, really awesome things. And I think that that makes it an interesting race to see in person. And... Uh, yeah, you know, the track itself is a impressive uh, facility in size, and, and uh, the history here is pretty cool uh, with how fast the cars, you know, can go. Um, but I think really the the thing that's uh, most interesting is the uh, the fan experience throughout the weekend, just how, how they, have, they have fun. And, um, you know, I, I, this one I would put – I would put the Talladega uh, party atmosphere up against any other racetrack throughout the si throughout the circuit throughout the year. They always put on a special concert and so forth. I think Charlie Daniels is here this weekend. Is that right? I mean, people are going to love that. Where do you? Where else do we do those kind of things on a Saturday night or a Friday night? Um, uh, it just seems like that they. Uh, you know, the fans just have a lot of fun. There's more to do here, and there's a lot more going on than just a race on Sunday. I'm going to go to your left here to Ben, then to Chase, and then to Dustin. Uh, Dale, Ben White, Lexington Dispatch. Uh, looking a couple months ahead to the Brickyard 400, your dad won that race in 95. What do you remember about that race and his win, and, and what would it mean to you to get one before you retire? Uh, I know that he was real excited about winning there. Um because it was Indy and Jeff had won the year before and uh, that was a pretty big deal. But um, And he joked about being the first man to win it. 
Um, he thought that was always funny to be able to mess with Jeff. But I, um, you know, I, I, was, I always said that I thought we always borrowed Indianapolis from the Indy cars. Indies and Indianapolis is, is all Indy car, the history there, uh, the, the, what that track has been through, um, the, the struggles that it went through uh, during World War II, and um, it just has, uh, you know, just when you're there, you just feel like uh, you're, you're at a monument of some sort or somewhere completely uh, sacred in motorsports. And I've always felt like as a stock car guy, we sort of borrow it, we're guests to the IndyCar guys there. And um, it's, it's on loan as a favor. And, um, and that's fine, I like it that way. I'm excited about the upcoming Indy 500. And um, it's gonna be pretty interesting to see how all that works out. I got some good buddies in that race. I've become friends with some of the drivers over there. Uh, and uh, yeah, the win there would be pretty incredible because of, not just because of, uh, I, I, the win there would be incredible because it's the, because of reasons outside of stock car racing, you know, just because of the history of the track and everything that's happened there, um, you know, before we ever got there, you know, it's pretty incredible, the history of that place. And, and um, I, you know, I'm happy that we've even had the opportunity to, to have ran there once. Chase. Chase Walton, FoxSports.com. Dale, you had mentioned your, your uh, six wins here, including four in a row from 2001 to 2003. Uh, what about Talladega that makes you so good here? I've had some, you know, the cars have to do everything you want them to do. I've had some really, really awesome cars. When we were racing in the, uh, the Bud car, we had to deal more on our motors and just an incredible engine package with Tony Jr. and Tony Sr. were really, really uh focused on the plate car they were real confident in themselves the car always did what i wanted to do and um when i've run for rick i've had the same opportunities at times uh just some really really great cars anytime you win here um you know it's because it's a it's a combination of some decisions you made but the car being capable of doing those things so i've been here when i've had the car uh, that wasn't capable of making the pass that I needed to make and you don't end up uh, as aggressive because you don't have the confidence in the car throughout the day you lose confidence and you become a little more defensive about your position than really offensive and aggressive and proactive toward moving forward when the car seems to be uh, able to do anything you 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 try anything you know and I think that you're always uh, you know that 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 confidence, I think uh, a lot of times that, you know, when you're out there, we can all kind of see each other's confidence and ability in the way we drive. And, um, you know, you tend to, if you get used up a little bit and your car's not doing the, the right thing early in the race, guys get weary of working with that car. You know, they can see that it's not capable and, um, so a lot of variables really play into being able to have a successful day. Uh, I do think I understand the draft really well. I'm sure a lot of guys in the field understand it just as well as I do. And it seems like that everybody's caught on to side drafting and how important that is. And when it's when when on the track, it is best to use and how to use it to make uh, moves and continue to create moves. Uh, guys are getting so much smarter. It's getting a lot harder. Uh, you know, it when years ago it was like we were the only one out there that knew most of the stuff, and now most of the guys know everything. And it's hard. It's hard to hard to make all the moves you want to make because some of them guys are pretty smart. There's a lot of great plate racers in this in the sport. Um, Denny Hamlin, Logano, Kurt Busch is always up front. Uh, McMurray is always going to be moving toward the front. He's a great plate racer. And it seems to suit a certain personality, a certain style of uh, person. Seem, you know, the same guys seem to always run well um, at the plate tracks. In the middle of the Dustin. Dustin Long, NBC Sports. 
Dale, uh, some people look at the, the way you've started the season and are already suggesting that this is almost like a must-win situation for you because of your points. And they start speculating, looking ahead to, well, he, he has a chance here, he doesn't have a chance here, or things like that. What, what do you say to, to those people? And is it difficult not to get into a mindset of thinking this is a weekend that you absolutely have to have? Well, um, you know, that mindset might actually work uh, and, and, you know, do and produce results for some guys. I don't know if that's probably the, be the way best way for me to go about it, but I definitely need to go in there and be aggressive. And, and I, know, I know when I've won races here what, you know, what approach I took that day that, do that helped me get there. And I know I need to be that way. I know I need to be a certain way men mentally and, and, and uh, attitude-wise throughout the day to have success. Um, I don't, uh, you know, I don't uh, buy the notion that we can't win any anywhere but Talladega or Daytona. And, uh, you know, we have had, we have had, we have had a dry spell I uh, haven't won a lot of races, but you know, we have won other we have won at other tracks in the past. Um, but I don't. I think if I go in thinking this is a must win, then that's probably I'm probably going to get in there and make a few mistakes if I go with that kind of attitude. That might work for s other athletes and in in, a, in any sport. Um, <coughs> Especially in team sport, it can be a great a attitude to have. You know, if you're if you're five guys on a basketball court in a must-win situation, you can lean on each other and all that. But um, when you're out there trying to make moves in the draft and stuff, I don't know if that's a good attitude to have. Like, must-win might get you to making taking some risks that that put yourself and your team and your and your competitors in bad situations that eventually take you out of the race. So. Um, I think I'll just know. I just know what I need to do. I'm gonna go out there and try to do it. Um, I've said it in the past. You got to run the last 50 laps mistake free, and uh, the guy that does that will win the race. And that means like choosing the right line to, to move up and take the run. And every every move and decision, every s slight turn of the wheel has to be the right decision. And if uh, you know, and, and I know I've been able to do that in the past, and I know when I've screwed it up in the past, and uh, we just have to, you know, go out there and perform and get it done. I, I, you know, we anybody can win this race, anybody in the field, except a couple cars. But um, I don't, I don't buy that we can't win anywhere else. You know, I know we haven't really ran that great, but um, I just know what we've been able to do in the past and how easy, you know, how it can turn around. We we can get it going and. There's a lot of season left. Can you explain the mindset that you have when you have success here? What, what, what is that exactly? Can you put that into words? Yeah. When um, the best one, I guess, the best example would be in, when we won the uh, Daytona 500 in, uh, a couple years ago. <coughs> there was so there was a couple times in that race where I was battling Greg Biffle. And he was, uh, I really didn't have any help behind me. And the only way I could really keep myself from sliding backwards was to run like one inch off his door just and squeeze him against the wall. And it really kind of killed both of our cars, but at least he wasn't passing me. It kind of, when I run, you run somebody really, really tight with the way these cars draft today. Uh, and it, it just stops both cars in their tracks. And you know, as long as nobody's, you know, coming from behind and going to go around both of you, um, that's a good defense until uh, you get somebody coming up and getting it to give you some help. And I had to do that a lot in that race and, it, and, be, and be, and it was a bit outside of character for me to drive so much like a jerk, I guess. And, uh, but that's what you got to do. And you got to keep on cracking the whip to fire, you know, keep telling yourself like this is what has to happen. This is how I have to do this to 
to make this work if I want to uh, to win. I can't, you know, accept him taking the lead, maybe losing a couple spots and falling to fourth and thinking, man, I'll just get it back. That's not – it's not as easy anymore. The cars don't – the cars are too equal and um, you have to f you have to be more – way more – um, the aggressive to holding positions and defending positions, and you got to run guys tight, you know, and they don't like it. Nobody likes somebody hanging on their quarter panel because it it doesn't feel good and and it makes cars act weird, and and they just don't like it, you know. And so, uh, but you have to do it that way, and so you have to start the race really with that attitude. You got to be you got to be willing to work every single lap, and not you know not not settle for for rioting you know when we uh when you get when everybody goes up to the top you know and gets in line you got to figure you got to be think you know you got to be thinking to yourself like uh there's ways to like pass one car at a time and it's kind of hard you got to line it all up just perfectly uh but you got to keep trying to do that and instead of just sitting there and being okay with how things are going you know and that you know the guys that are going to sit there and chill aren't going to win that race and um you got to try to figure out how to get keep more, keep moving forward and you know it just uh it take it, to do that for like 4 hours to be like be pushing yourself to to think 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 how can i you know how can i do something with this situation it's uh it, it it's uh tiring but it's what it's going to take to you know to to, to get us to victory lane at least well, Dale, we're going to give you the opportunity to go chill now because all on-track activity for the remainder of the day has been canceled due to rain. Schedule unchanged tomorrow. We'll see you here tomorrow and then again on Sunday. All right. Thank you, guys. Take care, buddy.